Alrighty, hosses, welcome back. And now that we have our component displaying exactly how we want, what we have to do next is we need to set up our actions. Now remember, an action is basically just anything that you can do to your application. So clicking a button, that's an action. Submitting a form, that's an action. Moving a slider, that's an action. It's really simple. It's just anything that you can do to your app. So what I'm gonna do in this little lesson is I'm just gonna have it where whenever the user clicks one of these usernames, like clicking the name Bucky Roberts, that's an action. So whenever they click it, I'm gonna display the uh, details below. So again, we're only gonna have one action in this little demo. Uh, keep things really simple, but once you see how to build and set up one action, you can do it for 100. So an action, if you could have guessed, is just a function. A function that you call and I'll explain a little bit of a uh, terminology in just a second but for now just go ahead and create a new directory and let's just go ahead and name it actions and since I'm only gonna have one I'm just gonna make a new file and I'll name it uh, index.js usually if you have a bunch you may want to break it up but again I'm gonna keep things real simple so there you go let me rearrange this all right so for this action, again, it's just a function, so you can name it anything you want. What it's gonna be is whenever the user, which is me, clicks one of these names. So you can say click user, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say select user. And since it's gonna be the only function in here, we can just go ahead and export it as a constant. Select user. Now, what information do we need to pass in to this function? Well, the only thing that we need to pass in is what user they selected. So as a parameter, I'm just gonna go ahead and write user. And actually, let me do it this way. Might as well keep everything on uh, nice and neat. So make a fat arrow, we'll do that uh, kind of new ES6 syntax. Get my semicolons taken care of right now. And I guess we can do this right now. So I'm just gonna print out in the console whenever they click, and this is just to verify, you really don't need to do this. But just so we can see that something's going on, I'll say um, whenever they click the user, I'll just print out you, uh, I don't know, click on user. Now remember this user is the user object. So whenever we wanna print out something from it, we'll have to say like um, user first to print out their name. So user first and that'll print out their actual name instead of this weird looking object. So there we go. But now what we have to do, clean up my code a little bit, is this. So you know that I said that basically this action right here is a function. Well, that was kind of a lie. The action is actually the part that gets returned. The actual function is called the action creator. So I'll finish this and then I'll explain. It's, it really doesn't matter that much, it's just terminology, but I figured I might as well explain what's going on. So the action itself is made up of two parts. Let me show you my diagram. The first part is a type, and the type is really just a string that explains what happened, like new movie button clicked, user name clicked, slider moved, any way to describe what happened to your application. Now the second part is the payload or any information that you need to give your app. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and give it the user object so they have access to whatever user they clicked. So if I click Joby's name, we're just gonna pass the user object into or as the payload. So I'll go ahead and finish this and then you guys are gonna see what's going on. So the type, again, this can be anything you want. For the app, whenever it needs to handle it, I'm just gonna say user selected. So that's the type of action that occurred, the user got selected, the user got clicked on. Now again, the payload, I'm just gonna pass in user, and you can actually name this parameter anything you want, you can name it data, it's just kind of convention to name it payload. All right, so 10 seconds ago, I was saying something about, this isn't actually the action, it's actually the action creator. What the heck was I talking about? Technically, in React, the correct terminology is, the action is made up of two parts. It's an object with a type and a payload. So this, what it returns, this is actually the action. Now this entire function 
is called an action creator. So again, you have a function that you're gonna be calling from your application and it's called the action creator and its job is just to return an object called the action. All right, so that is fantastic. So now let's actually go ahead and use this action creator or this function that we just made. So over in your user list, of course, what we need to do is we need to hook it up. So we're gonna put a function or an event handler on this list item and we're gonna pretty much hook it up to this function right here. So whenever they hit this, we're gonna say on click, call this function. So what we need to do first is just go ahead and import everything. So we're gonna import select user from, how do you get there? Up to actions index. All right, and my semicolon and okay. So this select user, is equal to whatever this exported, boom, this function. So here's the thing, and this is the only other thing that may uh, throw you for a little bit of a loop. So we can just say on click, call select user, and you may think that that would be perfect. But here's the thing. See, we are hooking up our React application to work with Redux. So if we do that, then we kind of bypass the important stuff. So it will work, but it isn't hooked up properly to be used in a Redux application. So in order to use it in a Redux application, we just can't pass it in directly. What we need to do is we need to connect it to this container, which is the smart component. So again, we can pass it into the component directly, but to hook it up with Redux, we actually need to hook it up to this connect function right here. And it's almost the exact same as this, just another function. Actually, let me add it below. So what we do is we need to make a fun function called match dispatch to props. And it sounds confusing. They named these functions so confusing, but they're actually really easy to understand. It's kind of annoying. Miss teacher to match dispatch to props. Okay. So let me go ahead and type this. Gotta make sure I don't have any typos and check this out. So all we're doing right here is instead of just passing it in directly, we're just gonna pass it in as a prop. So you know before all we did right here is we pretty much said, all right, whatever the state is, we're gonna pass that in as a prop. Well, in order to use it in our component, we also need to pass it in as a prop. So we're gonna take this function pass it in as a prop and we're gonna hook it up pretty much so we can use it with a Redux. And dispatch just pretty much is a fancy way of saying call a function, that's it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna return bind action creators and bind, this is just a synonym for connect, and action creators, remember I said, it's just another name for a, a function. So we're pretty much gonna connect this function See, it's so easy. Why didn't even <laughs> everything so confusing? And whenever we pass it in as a prop, we can actually just use the same exact function name. So it's super easy. So the prop select user is equal to the function select user. Easy enough. Now, just for housekeeping, the last parameter that we have to call on this is dispatch. And again, like I said, that is just um, something that happens behind the scenes with Redux to actually call this function. All right, so in order to actually throw this in, right after match state to props, we just throw this function in. And that's it. So again, all we did is whenever the user does something to your application, they need to generate an action. And an action is just a way of telling your entire application that something happened. So we made an action called user selected and of course, this entire function that gets called is called the action creator because it creates this object. Now, whenever we pass it in to our component or container, since it's kind of smart now, we're just gonna pass it in as a property with the same name so we don't get confused or anything like that. So now in here, we have access to a property called select user, which is essentially this function boom roasted. So. We can go ahead and call that right now, actually. So let me clean up this code a little bit so we can see what's going on. Entertaining myself over here, all right. 
So the key is equal to the user ID still, and I'll say on on clock. I'm just kidding. All right, so on click, what do we want to do? We just want to say this dot props dot select user. And remember, this function it actually takes in the user object. So make sure just to pass in the entire user and not the user ID or username or anything like that. And now let's interview a function, got an object, and that is because I am an idiot and this needs to be a function. <laughs> All right, so make sure that you actually treat this as a function and not a property since it is a function, third bucky. All right, so now if I rebuild this, hopefully, if we didn't do anything else wrong, whenever we click these, let me bump this up, Check this out. You clicked on user Bucky, Joby, Maddie, Joby, Bucky, tomato, tomato. So what we did is we successfully hooked up an action creator to a user event. So now whenever they click this, it calls the action creator. And in essence, we know that it's creating this action or this object because we have this line of code that is running successfully. So now, that we can create actions using user events, what is the next piece of the puzzle? Well, now we have to figure out how to pipe this off to a reducer, what the heck a reducer is, and why we need it. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial, and it's gonna be awesome. I bet you guys can't wait, the suspense is killing you. So yes, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.